Hi everyone, Dan Eddy here, author of Crimo, the Peter Crimmins story, the definitive biography of the former Hawthorne captain, Peter Crimmins, who sadly died of testicular cancer back in 1976, at the age of just 28, left behind young wife Gwen and two young boys, Ben and Sam, and uh, it was one of the most heartfelt stories in, in football history, probably still is um, the the inspirational fight of Peter to try and fight through his illness for two years and come back to football and lead Hawthorne to a premiership, which ultimately uh, failed. Uh, the disease took hold and he sadly passed away just three days after the Hawks won the 1976 premiership. And there's the famous photo, which I'm sure we've all seen at some point, of, um, of Peter's teammates taking the cup back to Peter's house in Croydon uh, late at night after the grand final and uh, the pride on his face, despite the fact that he clearly was near the end of his life, was uh, had, yeah really touched a touched a chord. It won the photo of the year. Clive McKinnon took the photograph and it uh, won the award and deservedly so. It's lived on forever, and uh, as has Peter's name. He, his name is adorned on the medal, the Peter Crimmins Medal for Hawthorne's Best and Fairest, which Gwen presents every year. So uh, his name well and truly lives on at Hawthorne and you speak to anyone, and I did, I spoke with dozens and dozens of people who knew Peter, whether they went to school with him, did his homework for him, for example, or uh, grew up with him in Shepparton or went to Assumption College with him where Peter was a standout footballer and, and cricketer at Assumption, one of the most famous schools in Australia, uh, or at Hawthorne or people he played football against or people he met through his work with Puma as national sales manager with the likes of uh, our famous Olympian Raylene Boyle uh, and so on. Peter had an impact on everyone that he crossed paths with and I tried to track down as many as I could and and try and paint a really rounded picture of Peter's life, the good and the bad and the tough and the, the fun and you name it. And it's a credit to the people I interviewed that they were willing to be so honest with Peter's life and and their connection to him and there's some really fond memories shared by so many people people who might have just been Hawthorne supporters who just admired him from afar but worshipped the man they've still got his number on the back of their duffel coats to this day so um, it's a 500 pager so sit down with a couple of coffees you might take a little while to get through it but I promise you it's worth it uh, lots of photos as well a couple of glossy sections there some never before seen photos I was really lucky that Peter's parents Myrna and Brian kept every snippet of information about Peter throughout his life when he was a little boy through to when he was a star at Hawthorne and um, their their meticulous keeping of information was critical for a biographer like myself who wants to paint the full picture of what a person's life was like. Um, there's the young family there taken from the age back in uh, 1975 and uh, you can see just how young Ben and Sam were and, and how Tragic it was that Peter died just a few months, no, probably you know, 12 or 13 months after that photo. Um, yeah, so sitting down with Gwen and Ben and Sam was uh, a privilege for me, but at the same time it was really, really tough to hear their stories and what it, what it took to uh, grow up without a husband and a dad. It's been really tough for all of them, still is. Uh, the boys have grown into fine young men uh, despite the challenges they faced and Gwen has really fought on and, and kept Peter's kept Peter's torch burning, really. Um, she's always willing to speak up on his behalf and, and share the story and talk about the struggles of dealing with someone who has cancer and the real efforts that it takes. Um, Gwen's sister, Lynn, nursed Peter in his final days because there was no palliative care back then. So um, she... She sort of sacrificed her life to come and, and live with the family and, and help nurse him and help help Gwen as well. So really different times. I spoke with a medical expert at Peter McCallum Cancer Clinic to get an idea of how Peter's illness evolved and, and could it have been caught earlier? Um, answer to that's probably yes, um, which is which is a sad reality. Um, and the other the other sad part to that is that if if he contracted the cancer maybe four or five years later, he may still be here today. The, the advances in technology ramped up over the next decade or so, helped in part by 
uh, money raised after Peter's death, actually, with uh, the Peter Crimmins uh, Memorial Cancer Trust, uh, which was set up to, uh, to aid cancer research. So in that way, he was able to contribute, but sadly, he was uh, a few years too early for the right treatment to actually help him, and he tried everything. People would send back um, uh, religious water from overseas and say, drink this, you know. They would just tried everything to try and save the great man's life, but sadly... It was too late, unfortunately, but um, he, he lives on to this day and I, uh, I've really tried to capture that with a, a social history of the times Peter grew up in and, and hopefully that comes out in the text and I hope you enjoy reading Crimo. Love to get your feedback. Um, you can look me up at daneddybooks.com and, and uh, let me know what you think of the, of the story because it's a... Uh, yeah, it's one that should be told. It's taken a long time to be told, and I think when and, and Peter's brothers and, and the boys as well and, and everyone was, was ready to tell Peter's story, and I've been honoured to be the, the biographer tasked with, with doing that. So I hope you enjoy Crimo as much as I enjoyed writing it, and stay 